It's time to move the babies to a bigger area. Normally we just keep each mama in each stall, but since we just have Olive right now, we wanted to leave her in here a little bit longer and give them a little bit more space. Okay. Play with the straw. There we go. Nice big double pen for them. Salem, do you want to get with those babies? I know, she wants so badly to play with them, so she keeps sticking her little paw under there. Are you babies all scared? Are you all scared? That was scary, huh? There you go. That is a fun box to jump on. How do three babies nurse from two teats? <laughs> they can't. They just gotta fight over it. Yay! <laughs> You did it! Now you gotta jump off. There you go. That's a slippery box. Mel's <laughs> gonna put her stuff. <laughs> I was just gonna say we need rubber on it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Olive is being a pretty good mama. She's obviously starting to get a little bit tired of them. That's pretty normal for the first fresheners. They want to nurse them a little bit at first and then they're a little tired of it. But babies are growing and getting nice and fat, so they're getting enough. Is that one still your favorite or have you switched? Cottontail. <laughs> you still like her. <laughs> okay. Normally the bucklings are the biggest ones, especially when they're first born. But this little doling is huge. <laughs> and she's still big. She's really dominant and um, very confident, which which you like to see. But uh, yeah, she's definitely staying bigger than the little buckling and the other little doling. This little one is definitely caught up. You know, she was falling all over the place. And then now, <laughs> now that she's eaten more, she's gotten a little bit better. There you go. I haven't figured it out yet. Oh. Do it! Yay! <laughs> that one's good. That's a good layer. Okay, come. Salem really, really wants to come in, so we're gonna <laughs> let her. She loves baby girls. She really cup. wants to lick them, but we won't lick them. Nope. Nope. Lick them. <laughs> Look at that tail. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so fun? Those are cute, huh? Ah! Don't lick them. Where's the other one? Oh, he's behind me. sad day today because our family dog Dora of 16 17 years passed away and uh, I don't want to cry so I won't talk about it too much but we put her by the favorite tree and we're gonna make her a sign with a frisbee because that's for Dora she loves catching frisbees it's pretty crazy we had her since well, as long as we've had Lydia, we have old home videos of Dor Dora. Yeah, little Dora running around. It's so. She plays with kids so well. She's so soft. She yeah. Could still catch a frisbee. She could still catch a frisbee all the way up till when she was 16.
Well, it's time to milk again. <laughs> we do this twice a day. So milking is a big part of our life here on the farm. I hope I don't spend too much time pointing out all of the does different weaknesses because they all are so amazing and beautiful and easy to milk on the stand. So you really can't ask for more than that. Sure, there are things to improve. So we have good health and longevity, but overall, I just love all of these does. We milk four does morning and night, hazel, Tatum, Fern, and Tilly. In that order, I didn't make the order they did. <laughs> My teat cleaning protocol has changed over the last 13 years that we've owned goats, but I think I finally settled on the one that works for me. First, we dip the teat in a cleaning solution and then wipe it off, making sure to get that teat opening really clean. We do one squirt onto the cloth wipe so that we can flush out that teat and check for any irregularities, and then we start milking. Kevin often asks me, what do you think about while you're milking? <laughs> I don't know. I must have like a weird look on my face where I'm staring off into the distance, but I'm just thinking of all the things I've got to do that day, listening to the birds. I just like being in my own head sometimes. I don't play music or watch anything or listen to anything. I just like the quiet sound of me milking and thinking about life. After I'm done, I do a little iodine dip. After you milk a goat, their tea opening has been opened and it's more exposed to bacteria. So as that closes up in the next few minutes, I like to make sure and give them an iodine dip so that there's no bacteria that's going to get in there while that teat's closing up. Then I pour the milk into the carrier and bring the next one up. Okay, bye Hazel. Have a good day. The best reward is knowing that I trained a first freshener or a first milker to the stand. This is Tatum's first year on being milked and she's doing amazing. She doesn't kick, she's very patient, she's very new to it, so the look on her face always cracks me up, but she's such a sweet doe and I love her and I love her udder, so it's such a joy to milk her every day. Bye Tatum, have a good day. Fern always has such a solid amount of milk. She really is one of those like steady goats that just nothing makes her milk go down. She's also a little bit on the hefty side, so we have been pulling back on the grain on her because she's just one of those does that can put on weight really easily, which is fine because she's nice and healthy, but also we need to watch that a little bit. But she milks down nicely, and then time to bring her mama Tilly up. Bye Fern, make friends today. Oh, Tilly. <laughs> we often think of Tilly as the old one on the farm, but she's only five years old. That's not that old in goat years. You can see that her udder is sagging a lot more than it was back in her first year of milking. And that's the reason why we try to improve udder attachments, because we want a goat to be able to have a healthy udder for a long time. And when the udder starts dragging down, it gets exposed to more bacteria than normal. And so you just want everything to stay nice and high and tight so it can stay healthy. Still, Tilly's a great goat to milk. She empties out easily and she's pretty sweet. She's a little light on her back feet, meaning she will kick into the pail if you touch those legs. So we stay clear of them and she does pretty well. And we've always got the kitties waiting by, hoping for a little taste of milk. Bye, Tilly. Make friends today, okay? Be a little nicer. We always get the question, do we drink the milk raw or do we pasteurize it? And for years, we were comfortable with drinking raw milk, mostly because I was pretty proud of my sanitation and cleanliness practices here on the farm. But since doing milk testing the last couple years, I've noticed that even with really healthy practices, we can still have high somatic cell counts. And since I wanna start making a lot of different hard cheeses and I want to age this milk, I decided to go ahead and gently pasteurize the milk so that I can make sure that it's gonna last long and that all of my hard work with the cheese ends up tasting good. <laughs> Raw goat's milk only really lasts a few days in the fridge before it starts tasting a little strong and a little bit off. But by pasteurizing, it lasts up to two weeks in the fridge and tastes nice and fresh. And the bonus is that I'll be able to make lots of different hard cheeses and feel comfortable aging them without them going bad or tasting off. My pasteurizing method is pretty hands-off, so it's really not an extra chore for me to do. I already have this big pot for cheese making, and I already have this thermometer that sets off an alarm when we reach a certain temperature. That way I don't have to babysit milk on the stove. So I fill the big pot with water, and then I have my pot of freshly squeezed milk. I turn on the heat, put a lid on, and walk away. 
This way I don't have to stir it or babysit it. And in about 15 to 20 minutes, my little alarm will go off and I'll know that we reached 165 degrees, which is the pasteurization temperature. Once we hit that, I can turn it off because for milk to be pasteurized, it just has to hit 165 degrees for about 15 seconds. So we'll take it off the heat, put it in a little water bath to cool down, and then store it in the fridge just like we normally do. I really like this method, it's super simple, and I already had everything because I'm already getting into making hard cheeses. I think the debate on whether raw milk or pasteurized milk is better is sort of an interesting one, and I think it really comes down to your herd management practices and what your goals are. For me, since I have goat's milk and I want the milk to last a long time, especially when I'm making hard cheeses that need to be aged, I'm gonna do this method. But other people might find things that work for them and that's okay. But hopefully this helps anybody who is wondering how you do a home pasteurization and uh, hopefully I'll be able to show you guys all of the fun cheeses I make from my goat's milk. We've had so much milk lately that I've been really getting into making more cheeses. One of the classic goat cheeses is called Chev or some people call it chevre. It's a really simple cheese because all you do is add a culture and let it sit on the counter overnight. It's very similar to how yogurt is made. As it cultures and thickens overnight, it creates that nice tart flavor. And then the next day, all we do is strain it for a few hours so we can get it a little bit thicker. After all that whey has been drained off, what's left is beautiful, rich goat cheese. Now, a lot of people don't like the flavor of goat cheese and actually neither do I, but that's just store bought goat cheese. When you make goat cheese from fresh goat's milk, it has a completely different flavor. To me, this tastes just like cream cheese with a little bit of a tart yogurt flavor. It doesn't taste bad or pungent. For most of this, we're gonna package it up and freeze it. That way we can use it in future recipes. But for the last little bit, we're gonna make a nice onion and chive goat cheese spread. So we've got onion powder, and then obviously I'll salt it heavily, and then we'll head to the garden and get a few green spring onions, mince them up, then add them to this beautiful, rich spread. Now we're ready to use it throughout the week as a little snack to dip with crackers or to put on toast. It is the best. All right, are you guys ready to see the very first hard cheese that I've made? I've made mozzarella and chev for years, but I've been afraid to make the hard cheeses. Also, you have to have a special fridge for it. It's, it's a lot of stuff of, that's involved in making hard cheeses and aging them. I know eventually I'm gonna need probably a whole big cheese fridge <laughs> next to my regular fridge. But here's what I got right now. <sighs> Look at that. Now it looks kind of goofy, I know, but this is actually what this certain recipe is supposed to look like, <laughs> apparently. This is a Harvati cheese, and we have it in its drying phase. But it's supposed to do a slow dry, so we have it at 60 degrees, about 85% humidity. I turn it every day and watch it, so we shall see. You know, some cheeses look a lot smoother than that cheese. It just depends on the culture you use, the recipe. There are so many things to know about making cheese. So if you stick with me in about three months, we'll find out if that Harvati worked. In the meantime, I'm gonna be making a bunch of Gouda because I hear that that is the best and easiest one to start with. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'm excited to learn how to make cheese. And we're gonna have all of this goat's milk now that we're gonna be milking Olive soon and then Daphne. So I better start learning how to make some hard cheeses because we're gonna have a lot of milk. Look, they did that again. They that pushed bad? the eggs out. Oh my God, maybe they can tell that they're not bad. fertile. Or bad or bad. Maybe they want to build a nest on the outside, but they didn't gather them. They just kind of rolled them out. They're so weird. Guys, we just need to come tonight and candle them and see if any of them are. We already tried that. Well, I know, but it was a bit early when we did it. They're white. That means that they're newer eggs, Napoleon, right? Napoleon, did you do that? I know. I'm like, they ate one of them. <laughs> okay, tonight we're going to come back in just a couple hours and we're gonna candle them. We're gonna see which ones are fertile and which ones are not. And hopefully there's a few that are fertile. We might have to take them away and put them in an incubator. We'll see. 
You think we're gonna have to take them away? Or like, do you think we'll have to put it in an incubator? Um, maybe. I kind of just trust them to do it. But last year, last year, they didn't do it. <laughs> I don't know how well they'll take to in introducing babies, so... Well, maybe we'll just raise them ourselves or have Salem raise them. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go do the eggs. Eggs. Yo. Eggs. Okay, are we ready? Are we ready? Yes. See, what is that? Is that just the yolk? Yeah, by now we would see veins. That one's definitely not fertilized. Should we take it out? Oh, wait a second. Oh. Well. Does that mean there's something in there? Yep, yeah, that one's a dud. Well, oh, that one's a dud too. Oh. Nope. That's that definitely chicken. Too not a chicken. <laughs> what am I talking about? <laughs> Cut that out. That is a chicken. Cut that out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You had it at a cool angle and I saw the whole thing of it. Well, Esme laid about 10 eggs or so this year, and she sat on them a little bit for an hour here or there, but not very much. And then they pushed all the eggs out of the nest onto the ground. So after candling them, it doesn't look like there's any development at all on any of them. So it doesn't look too good for this year. What are you trying to do? She comes in there and gives me kisses. Oh, you can give kisses, but when somebody else tries to kiss you, you guys don't like it. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Zoro's looking pretty good. Yeah. He looks like he's gotten a little bit bigger. Yeah. Good job, buddy. Feeding him all that food. Yeah, he definitely looks more muscular, yeah. like fatter. So I know you guys are wondering why we haven't put the next layer on the fence, but the reason why is because, don't worry, the geese <laughs> help keep the does away. <laughs> so that way, no breeding's happening through this fence. Carlisle simply will not allow it. Well, as much as this mound of dirt drives you guys all crazy, we need to keep it because the goats love it. It's the perfect spot to come hang out. You got all this hay on your head. So on the ultrasound, we saw one, possibly two. I think there are two in her because she still has like a month to go. So I think she'll fill out here and we'll see two little babies. Hopefully a buck and a doe, right? That's right guys, this whole year I've been talking about wanting does, but out of Daphne, I want a buck. So we're hoping for that. I would love to have a Napoleon Daphne buck, but saying that now means we're gonna get all does, of course. I definitely also want a doe, but having a little buckling would be awesome. Because I think the combo of Daphne's genetics and Napoleon's genetics would be the perfect goat. So, hoping that that combo works out well. Huh, you're beautiful. So are you, Zorro. Don't worry. Uh-oh, now that's gonna be Ethan's favorite. <laughs> she is pretty cute. This one is still dramatic, by the way. Did his ear straighten out? Oh, oh my god. No, I almost look. Almost. It's, it's a little flat. bit popping back. Oh, put it back. Put it back. Kevin likes it like that. It would never. It was never meant to. Let's be. see. They usually always straighten out. Eventually, it will. Well, this little one has gotten a lot stronger, and Olive's feeding her more. Yeah. 
So I think she'll be good. I don't think we'll have to bottle feed her. She still has the fro hairdo. She still has the little hairdo. <laughs> Well, now that the babies are almost a week old, it's time to start assessing them and deciding which ones we are going to raise up. I think we should just do all of it, guys. All of them. <laughs> she's like curious, like, I love goats that look up at you and like acknowledge I you. I know, she she's very sweet. Yeah. Very sweet, hi. What I like about her is how level she is. She doesn't like have a super high withers like uphill carriage but she's super level and confident so i think when she shows she's gonna walk oh. upright and be oh, really confident yeah. so we look at levelness and then we look how level the rump is she could be a bit lower in the back <laughs> like that <laughs> that's what they do during shows to kind of settle them down a little bit hi but you are pretty oh my goodness we also look at the width, and she's pretty wide. Stop nibbling, you can do it. These two are like a foot shorter. I know, these ones are a lot littler. She, she is has... nice and wide, but she's not as level. She has long no, legs. She's, she's low down here and higher up. Here. Yeah. She's a little bit like that too. So you all gave us really good name suggestions, and I don't know, we have so many that we like, so we're just gonna make a poll and put a link in the description or actually in the little pinned comment. So you can click on that and vote for your favorites. There were so many good ones, so <clears throat> I don't know. We'll just we'll just go with the best ones. Cottontail, I like. Kevin, you can't Cottontail. name a goat Peter Cottontail. <laughs> no. You can't name a doling that. <laughs> just cotton, just cottontail. <laughs> no, we're vetoing that. We're vetoing that. So I'm not sure if we're gonna let the buck go as a buckling because like I said before, we really want to prove out the mothers first, make sure that they are worthy to have bucks go out of them. So far, Olive looks really good. She has pretty good teat placement, but the babies are drinking all of the milk out of her, so we don't really see a true udder right now. We just see an emptied udder because <laughs> they're drinking constantly. When we hit about the two week mark, we'll be separating at night and getting a, a good picture of that first udder and we'll also start milking her, which should be entertaining. And then we'll know how she looks and how she milks out. There's a lot of factors that go into whether or not a doe should have a buck out of her go as a buck. Well, she's a pretty good mom, she's right? She's not very yeah. worried about them at all. Like she's not as stressed about us holding them or whatever. Yeah, she likes to take her breaks from the kids. Yeah, she definitely likes to feed them and then she's kind of done. But they're getting enough, they're all growing, they're happy. They like to stand on boxes together. Yeah. Olive has one in the same spot. Really? Oh yeah, she does have a white spot. Little necklace. Thanks for watching today's video, guys. Uh, we're getting through it because these cute baby goats are helping us uh, be happy. If you wanna watch the video last week where these babies were born, click right here. I thought I had the feeders all figured out that goats won't mess them up or poop, but I think a chicken figured out how to get into my feeder. Garbage.